Okay, so uh, a very good morning to everyone. So uh, my name is Lau. I am from School of Engineering, Asia Pacific University of Technology and Innovation. So uh, for today, uh, welcome everyone to our talk. So which is about how 3D printing is changing the world. Okay, so it is under the banner over there. So uh, uh, on behalf of School of Engineering, so uh, I want to introduce that. Why is the reason that we are proposing this kind of idea and also topic? So therefore, as we all know that 3D printing is actually right now getting more and more popular. So, and also this is also very crucial and also very vital as we are actually moving towards to the industry revolution 4.0. So where a lot of parts and also a lot of mechanism has to be uh, customized. So therefore, right now this 3D printing technology actually allows the flexibility in customization. So for example, previously, if you need to combine two parts in order to become one, so right now you only need to do it only in one shot, okay? So this today's session, we will talk about the 3D printing. So we will talk about how is actually it is started and also like uh, what is the history and all that. And also we will also uh, demonstrate the real, I mean a live printing process. So therefore, as the speaker is speaking on the content, so he will also demonstrating the live printing process. And also in the end, you will see the end product, end result. It will be a small part, but it will demonstrate it to you, okay? So therefore, now, uh, let me welcome the speaker for today, okay? Hi. So as you can see, so uh, let's welcome the speaker for today. So the speaker for today is, uh, his name is Adrian, Adrian Dio. He is from Cytron Technologies. So uh, let me share a little bit about his background. He's actually a bachelor degree in electrical and electronic engineering. And also he has a master degree in electronic system. Okay, so uh, talk, uh, talking about his experience, he was an uh, application engineer in National Instrument and also a program engineer in Penang Science Cluster. And right now he is joining Cytron Technologies in order specialized in the 3D printing technologies. So therefore the enthusiast, I mean the, his hobby and everything is actually about this Arduino 3D printing and also micro bits, et cetera. So I believe he is the best person in order to introduce this topic to every one of you. Okay, All so right. therefore, without further ado, let me hand over the stage to Mr. Theo. Okay, so now the stage is yours. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lau. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, okay, again, let me introduce myself. My name is Adrian, and I am a maker from Cytron Technologies. I've been a maker for uh, probably eight years from now since my university time. And okay, late, later I'll explain to you, I'll um, introduce myself better uh, after we go through our agenda of today. All right, in this webinar, I'll be um, sharing why 3D printer, uh, how 3D printer is about to change the world and it's already changing the world. Okay, so um, here's our agenda for the webinar today. So the I will go through the history of 3D printing because um, we all know what is a 3D printer. If we don't know what is a 3D printer, uh, I'll begin my session by explaining what is a 3D printer first. And later on, I'll share with you how a 3D printer came about. Okay, because a 3D printer exists for the past 40 years and why it's so popular today, right? Why is it wasn't so popular 10 years ago and why it's just recently right, become a hype for among all the uh, people, right? And then after that, I will do a 20 minutes demonstration. I will do a quick design of a spanner. I will design a spanner using SketchUp Mac. And then I will show you how you can bring this digital design into um, how you print it into an actual object. All right. So um, I will demonstrate the software and also the hardware. And I will show you what is an Ender 3 Pro. OK. Uh, during my session, you are welcome to drop any questions in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer, to reply your comment as well. And after that, while we start printing the object, I will do a sharing, a 20 minute sharing on how 3D printer is changing the world and where and how you can start your 3D printing journey. All right. Uh, over there, we will have a list of questions that you should ask if you are about to take on a 3D printing uh, journey. 
All right, and then later on, we'll have a Q&A session after that. Um, but to prevent insufficient time for Q&A, I suggest dropping your questions in the comment section so that I am able to reply you uh, in between the sessions. Okay, so like, let's get to it. Okay, so um, like what Dr. Law mentioned just now, so my name is Adrian. I'm from Cytron Technologies right now, and I'm part of the railroad education team. And I graduated my EE from Kenya University College, and then I did my master's in electronic system. So, um, and after that, I joined as an application engineer. So I completed my degree. I became an engineer in National Instruments, and then I took my master's. And then I become a program engineer in Penang Science Cluster, which I fully focus on education and technology, how to bring technology to schools, how to cultivate our students, how to teach us, um, how to bring STEM into our education system. All right. And um, one of my achievements that I would like to highlight is this GGITC 2015 by Schneider Electric. Why I emphasize in this achievement is because that's the first competition I got exposed to 3D printing, all right. Um, I attended a lot of competition, but one of these, this is the only competition that I get the opportunity to use a 3D printer for the first time. And with a 3D printer, I'm able to deliver my message across uh, clearer. I'm able to design a prototype and be able to uh, share uh, what my idea is, all right. Realizing the idea physically. So that's from that, from that competition. I'm not going to go into detail what's the idea of the competition, but you can ask me if you're interested. Okay. Um, last but not least, I am also a DIY enthusiast and also an ad tech advocate, meaning I love to build stuff. I like to DIY. I like to play with electronics. Um, and I am also an uh, technology education, technology advocate, means I strongly believe in technology in education. So I do a lot of teaching um, in schools in school for my students and uh, I used to teach teachers as well uh, and adults and parents. So I do a lot of teaching in Arduino 3D printing, microbit, um, any programming, uh, STEM related subjects for the students. All right, uh, without spending more time here. Okay, are you all ready? If you're ready yeah. then, Great. I will begin our session by explaining what is 3D printer. This is the biggest question. If you are here to understand uh, or you're wondering what is 3D printing, you have never heard of the 3D printing term or you have, you're not sure what is 3D printing. Okay. So I will do a bit of explanation and later I will show you a 3D printer and that we will be able to explain being able to see one explains what it is. So a 3D printing or an additive manufacturing technical term is a construction of 3D object, three-dimensional object from CAD model of digital 3D. In simple word, digital 3D model means you draw model digitally on the top of the software, and then you will be able to 3D print this object from the 3D printer. I got an example over here. I think this is a sphere. Right? It looks very sophisticated. Sphere. You can draw this model from your software and print it out using a 3D printer. Okay. The good thing about a 3D printer is that it's able to print complicated objects. Right? Imagine building this through hand. Right. It seems almost impossible, or it takes a lot of effort to build this right imagine 20 years ago i won't be able to build this uh, using any tools that i have right i need a lot of moving tools i need a lot of print tools. okay so a 3d printer allows you to do that uh, so you kind of have the idea that a 3d printer transform digital to physical Okay, that's the point that you need to understand right now. Okay, next, I'll go through the history of 3D printing. Uh, don't 
get overwhelmed by this slide. This slide is for you to um, follow me as I explain. Um, but you can just sit back and close your eyes and listen to a podcast of how 3D came about. Okay, um, this won't take long as well. All right, it all started in 1980s. Okay, 1980s, where Dr. Shidio Kodama is the first person to file a patent for a rapid prototyping technology. Okay, he had this idea that, all right, he had a similar idea of the 3D printing technology. And that time, it was the first time that it's been heard by the world. Okay, unfortunately, Dr. Shidio Kodama um, did not successfully patented this idea uh, due to insufficient funds for his application and he passed the deadline. So um, the patent didn't work out during 1984. Right? But in 1984, Charles Howe came in and he got this idea, which we all know it as stereolithographic apparatus, SLA. Okay, remember this term, SLA. SLA is the 3D printing technology that uses laser, it uses UV light to beam onto a uh, medium resins. So when the light touches this resin, it will harden the resins. So this is the first 3D printer that was invented by Charles Howe. All right, so 1984, he got this idea. This idea was patented by Charles Howe and he started his company called 3D Systems. So 3D Systems is a well-known 3D company uh, today, right? You can Google it and you will see 3D Systems, right? They are the pioneer of 3D printing. Right? They are a very big company today. Right? And in 1988, 3D Systems from Charles Howe, they created their first SLA product into the market, right? Remember, during 1988, this printer is not cheap. Right? It's not accessible to normal users like me or you. Right? It's more for manufacturing, more for production line. Right? People with a big, huge production line, they will use this 3D printing system. Okay, And then on the same year, 1988, a startup company known as DTM, they came out with a new 3D printing idea and that is known as the Selective Laser Sintering, SLS. So what's the difference between the SLA and the SLS 3D printer? The SLS 3D printer uses UV light beams into a powder. All right, it can be plastic, it can be glass. By hitting this beam into this laser beam into this powder, it joins the material together to form 3D object. Okay, so SLA uses resins, liquid form, and SLS uses powder to form 3D object, All right? So these two 3D printer came first. And if you know 3D printer today, you probably never heard of a 3D printer that came out from resin or a 3D printer that came out of powder. You probably heard of it, but you probably ne might never seen it before, okay? That's because the most popular 3D printer is known as the Fuse Deposition Modeling FDM. So in 1992, Fuse Deposition Modeling FDM 3D printer is patented by the Stratasys, a company known as Stratasys. On the same year, DTM, the startup company, also created their first, their first SLS product. All right. So um, note it down, 1992, FDM 3D printing technology is being patented. Why is this so important? Because, okay, if you are born in 1980s or if you are born in the early 1990s and then you finish your primary school, you finish your secondary school and the 3D printing term never came into your life. You never heard of 3D printing before. Why? But 3D printing was already there during 1992. Okay, I'll go through that again later. Uh, I'll, I'll explain why. But in 1999, world's first 3D printed organ was implanted in humans, okay? Um, that's the year where the medical industry came in in a full blast, right? In 10 years time after 1999, the medical field in 3D printing advanced a lot. You will see, um, by that time you see prosthetics, you see uh, 
organs like kidneys or bladders by through 3D printing technology. So the medical industry, they take up 3D printing very seriously. They do a lot of R&Ds and yeah, you you probably heard of it, right? In the, uh, during the 20s, uh, during the 21st, in the 2000s, uh, right? And then 2005 to 2008, Red Wrap Open Source Initiative. So Red Wrap is a company, they started this open source initiative where they designed their first The Darwin is known to be able to print its own part. Okay, so you probably heard of, hey, what, a, what if a 3D printer is able to print its own parts and print another 3D printer? So you bought a 3D printer, you print another 3D printer, you keep duplicating more and more 3D printer. So that's Darwin, the first printer that is able to print its own part. Um, if you are a hobbies or a 3D printing hobbies, you probably heard of the word red wrap because they develop, um, they, they have a product that allows you to DIY your own 3D printer and it's all open source. Okay. All right. So now came to a critical point. Um, 2009. FDM printing process patent expired. So remember, I asked you to remember on the 1992. So that FDM patent expired in 2009. Then that's where everything changed for the 3D printing community, for the 3D printing world. It's a revolutionary time for 3D printing technology. Okay, once the 3D, the patent expired, the price for 3D printers for FDM technology drops from 70,000 ringgit to 1,000 ringgit overnight, okay? And after that drop, you see a lot of new 3D printing, FDM 3D printing design come in, okay? That's the FDM printer is the printer that we use today. You see nozzle, okay, depositing their material to create a model. So that's the printer that blooms after 2009. And after that, until today, we see a lot of different applications from this FDM 3D printing. All right. So imagine that this patent expired earlier. All right. The community will get together and they, there are more ideas forming from the community as well. But during the 20 year from the patent period, a lot of R&D was put into by strategies on this technology. That's where that's why we have a good 3D printer today. All right, we have a good technology today that is cheap enough for everyone to be, uh, to for everyone to use it as a hobby, a device. Uh. All right. So this history is sourced by Dana Goldberg uh, from Autodesk, and she quoted that 3D printing is a technology that sounds new to everyone, but actually existed for 40 years already. 3D printing 40 years and still look brand new. All right, and we have to agree with it because it's still new to us until today, and we are still um, skeptical about the technology. We we are we weren't sure whether it works or it doesn't work, All right? But we are getting there. Okay, so this is the brief history of three D printing. It's a very interesting timeline. Um, we may be you may even see a movie about this history next time we wouldn't know all right so all right i'm gonna continue with um our next session which is the demonstration so over here i will do a quick demonstration on how you can draw a 3d object using sketchup make and you will slice with cura but before we do that let me explain what is CAD, Computer Aided Design Program. CAD program is a, a software. Back then, you use hand to draw 3D objects. An architect use hand to draw hand draw. There's no PC back then. But right now, we have softwares that are, allows you to draw 3D objects. And these softwares are called CAD tools. All right. A CAD program enables, on here, you can see one to five enables different uh, professions to, to do their job. Civil engineers, architect, they use CAD tools to draw structures of buildings, right? design buildings, and then um, landscaping is one of it. So we have drones who flew around a huge terrain to plot out 
the the terrain uh, um, the the characteristic of different terrains uh. so that's also 3d modeling of a larger scale and then there's mechanical engineer mechanical engineer is uh, it falls into the 3d printing category because imagine you want to to, to build a spanner you don't have to fabricate a spanner instead you can 3d print a spanner so it lands in the mechanical engineering field and then there's video game design video game design uh, as we all know there are a lot of 3d video games around these days right counter strikes um fortnite so all these are 3d design so whoever with a 3d background they are actually capable of printing this object into um into real objects uh, all right they don't need to go and pick up a new skill because they already know how to 3D model these objects. They just need to be able to print it out and realize it. All right, so over here, I mentioned that we will draw a simple spanner kitchen using SketchUp Make and slice with Cura. What is slice with Cura? Slicing is a process for, let's say I have this 3D digital object in my software. I need to tell my 3D printer where you should move to print this object, how you should behave in order to print this object. So Acura is a software that does that. It cuts this material into many layers and every layers have different coordinate for the machine to move around. And when it moves around, it prints out the object. Okay, later I will show you what Acura can do for 3D printer. Any questions so far? If you have any question, feel free to drop your questions in the command section. If no, I will um, start the designing. All right, the designing will take roughly five minutes. All right, so you are free to drop your question while I do the design. But this is called SketchUp Make. It's a free software and open source software. You can Google it, SketchUp Make. Um, the latest version is 2017 right now, but it's free. You can use it. You can use all the tools around here. Okay, so um, let's get to it. Okay, so actually I have the design in my head ready. So I will just proceed to designing. But first, let's build a base for my keychain. All right. Okay, this is my base for my kitchen. My size will be around this area. And then next, I will create into a solid. I will protrude, I will extrude it. So I have a solid object. And next, I will create a spanner shape, spanner over here. So what I do, put it here, all right? And then, So right now you probably don't understand what I'm doing now, but I'm actually, um, if you are a key maker, you, when before you build a key, you will take a piece of metal and then you will draw the key design on this piece of metal and then you will slice the metal into your shape of the key. So this is the same process that I'm doing, but I'm doing it digitally. I have a piece of metal, I have a piece of plastic. I'm drawing my spanner on this piece of plastic and then I slowly, cut out the parts that I don't want. So this is what's happening right now. Okay. And later when I cut it, you will be able to realize, oh, now I see the spanner. Okay. Erase this, erase this, erase this. Can you see the spanner over here? So I just remove my part, remove the part, remove the part. I have a very simple spanner over here. It works, all right, but it's not aesthetically uh, impressive. Uh, it looks like a Minecraft spanner. So let's decorate this, make it look nicer. All right, I'm gonna curve every edge around this spanner to make it look more um, friendly. All right, so every edge, I will put a square box so that I can do a fillet. So when I teach um, in schools, 
right? We use these tools to um, build confidence among students, right? It's a very simple tool to use. Um, when we want to teach students, we want them to get the easiest tool possible so that uh, they are able to, how to say, they are able to build confidence in 3D printing and 3D modeling. All right. Imagine learning this at young age, and when you become an architect in the future, you are familiar with the tools. You you kind of know how 3D modeling works. All right. So uh, that's what we are trying to do here. Okay. So now I have all my circular edges on all my spanner. Now I want to make a keychain hole over here. So what I do. Okay. I have a hole here. And then next, I want to label this spanner. I want to put a name on this spanner before I print it out. So I go to 3D text. Right, I can just type clicker and then put a text here. With this text, I'm able to let's see, put it here. And then and now I have my word. But I want, when I print it out, I want this maker to be, um, how to say, indent so that there's a whole maker. I'm able to see it clearer. So what I need to do next is explode this and then use this tool called the push pull. I remove all the edges first. Remove, remove, remove. Remove, remove, remove. Oops, sorry. And then remove. All right. So more or less, you can see my spanner is here already. So I have a very simple spanner design right here. All right. So next, um, just now, uh, the design is done already. But now I want to pass this object into another software called Cura. All right. Right now, my 3D printer doesn't recognize this object. It knows this is a drawing. OK, I know this is a spanner. But I don't know how to print this spanner. So what should I do? I need to transfer this object into another software, Cura, so that it can translate into machine um, instructions for my 3D printer so that it knows how to print this object. So I create this as a component and then I export it as SDL format. Okay. And then I just save it. Right. Make a just make a okay, now once I save it, I will have to use this software. Okay, this is called Cura. All right. Uh, let me quickly explain what is Cura. Like I said, it gives you the instruction for the 3D printer, but what you didn't know is that you're allowed to customize, you're allowed to set different settings for your 3D printer. Example, if I, I want to print this object. OK, let me give you an object. If I want to print this pot, how fast do I want to print it? How thick I want each layer to be? Should I Do I want it to be empty inside, or do I want it to be um, fully compact, dense, the material? right? So I'm allowed to do all these different settings for my 3D printer. Okay, It falls under different category. Example, layer height. Every layer my 3D printer runs, how high I want it to be. Right. right now, you can't imagine yet, but um, later when the 3D printer runs, you kind of be able to right, imagine how it runs layer by layer when it prints. And then there's uh, different features like infill. Infill is how dense you want the object to be inside. Do you want it to be hollow or do you want it to be 100% compact inside the, the object? And then, um, yeah different different settings okay right now i'm not going to go through every single settings okay but what i'm telling you is that the learning curve is steep for 3d printing there are a lot of settings that you can play with 
to achieve the best results. But there's of course a, com uh, a standard configuration for you to get your printing object. Okay. Um, bear in mind that to be able to 3D print doesn't mean you need a, a master degree for a mechanical engineer or electronic or EE. Right. You can be a designer. You can be an interior designer. You can be an architect. Right. Um, as long as you fiddle, fiddle around with these settings and then you play around, it's a DIY thing like you experiment until you learn. Okay. So now uh, my setting is already set for my keychain. I just need to bring the files in. So here's my file. Double click it. And then my file is like oversized. I will just set it to 1%. So this is my file over here. So what I need to do next is click slice process the file while i click slice it will slice my parts into different layers into multiple layers how do i know i can click preview all right preview will show me this is how it's gonna print later and every time it prints you can see all right this is how a 3d printer works my printer will move around and form the shape layer by layer Right until it reaches to the top. Okay, and by printing this, uh, it takes 12 minutes and one gram of my plastic, my filament. All right, so I'm gonna save this file. Okay, and this file will generate a G code. This G code is the instructions for the 3D printer. It knows where it should move around. Save. Okay, I'm gonna open my folder. Here's my folder. So next thing. I need to bring this file, the G code, to my 3D printer. There are a few ways to do it. I can, uh, from my 3D printer, there's an SD card. I can take the SD card, plug it into my PC, and pass this SD card back to my 3D printer and print it from my 3D printer. But today, um, I'm going to do everything by just sitting here. I'm not going to walk to my 3D printer yet until when it started printing. All right. So let's. Um, I'm going to print using this interface over here, which is called OctoPrint. So this is one of the upgrades that you are allowed to do it yourself um, so that you are able to print your object remotely without needing to be with your 3D printer side by side. Okay, My 3D printer is actually um, five feet away not from me, so I'm not able to reach it right now. But this is what you can see. There's a camera over there. All right, there's the clock over there. And my 3D printer is there waiting for me to, to print something. So in this system, I click upload. And then I upload my file, G code. By doing so, my file is being transferred. All right, when I click this print button, my file will be transferred into my 3D printer. And in this software, all right, in this uh, interface, you are able to monitor your 3D printer's uh, temperature, right? the, the condition of your 3D printer. OK, so now um, I click the print button already. It will take some time for the 3D printer to heat up. While it does that, let me explain to you what a 3D, what a 3D printer truly is by showing you. OK, let me go back to my slide first. Um, before we look at the real thing, this is the slide over here. So first step is to insert the SD card into the motherboard, which we do it online just now. And then turn on the power supply. The power supply is on already. And then you have to adjust the bit. All right. So this is the parts of a 3D printer. And there's this bit over here, printer bit. A printer bit is a place for you, for your... 3D printer to print the object on. So in order to print the object nicely above, you need to make sure that the bit is flat, straight, level. It's not bent. If it's bent, then you can't print the object correctly. Okay, so you need to calibrate and make sure the height of the 3D printer is flat. And then step four is to heat up the nozzle and the 3D printer bit. So the nozzle is over here. The nozzle is the tip of the 3D printer. So the nozzle temperature will heat up to up to 200 degrees Celsius 
to melt this material PLA filament. Uh, but depending on what material you use, you will need a different temperature uh, for your for your nozzle. And then your printer bed over here will also heat up. All right. Why you need the bed to heat up is so that the material you print will stay on top of the bed. It will stick on top of the bed. If it's cold, the bed is cold, the material will warp, right? It will contract and then your object will drop off. So having a heated bed is a very good feature to make sure your printer part doesn't move around. Number five, fit the filament into the extruder. So you heard that I you can you, I keep repeating this word filament, filament, filament. But what is a filament? The filament is a material for your 3D printer, right? In order to print your object, you need plastic materials. You need to melt this filament, and then the extruder will move around and it will print your object later when it runs i will move around move over there and then i will show you how it prints and last but not least select the file and print from the control panel okay so we're done here but let me show you what's happening on that side right now i'm gonna move over to that side okay um but before i move over okay i have a question I receive a question over here. Does the 3D printer interface that allows direct printing without SD card comes as part of the default setup of 3D printer or is custom configured by yourself? Okay, a 3D printer doesn't come with this um, default. It's not a default setup. A default setup is SD card, plug it in, and then you print it out. All right, it's an offline system, but um, you are allowed to configure, you are allowed to upgrade your 3D printer to do such feature, or to perform such, um, I would say, to add more features. There are a lot of things you can add into your 3D printer, right? So uh, this is what one of the things uh, that you can do. Okay. Uh, if you're interested to know how later at the end of the session, I will tell you, uh, I will explain to you how you can configure your 3D printer to do just this. Okay, I'm going to move over to the 3D printer. As you can see on the camera right now, uh, the 3D printer is moving. It's going to print the keychain right now. Okay, so this is the heat bait. And over here, this is the nozzle. I hope you can hear me. And then over here, this is the PLA filament. I'm using orange PLA filament. The filament will go into this feeder, and the feeder will push the filament into the nozzle. And when it's there, it will print the object layer by layer. All right, so over here, I have a 3D printer casing of a, a mini computer, a Raspberry Pi with a camera. This camera is watching this printer moving right now. And then over here, there's this control panel. All right. And then, okay, so observe the movement. The nozzle will move left and right, and then the bed will move back and forth. So this is two axes, and then there's another axis over here, which is the screw over here. It will go, move, it will move up slowly at every layer. All right. So we get the form of a socket. Right. So just a few of samples of attributed objects. Right. Um, bear in mind that this is a budget three D printer. But you can also bring very high quality objects with this budget of 3D printer. Okay, I'm gonna leave my camera here so that you are able to observe the 3D printing movement while we proceed to the sharing of how this 3D printer or how a 3D printer is able to change uh, the future. Okay. 
All right, so while the 3D printer runs, okay, um, I have another question. Okay, hold on. So, okay, um, the question is, what is the cost to own a 3D printer now? Is it expensive, difficult to assemble it ourselves? All right, a 3D printer these days costs um, as low as 800 to 900 ringgit, all right? Um, but, and the 3D printer, it, the price range, it depends on the feature of the 3D printer, but it can go as low as 800 to 900, and it's, uh, there are a lot of different types of 3D printers, so you can get a, a pre-built 3D printer, or you can DIY a 3D printer. So the 3D printer that I'm owning right now is the Ender 3 Pro, uh, it's a DIY 3D printer. When you get the box, it comes with different parts, right? You have to set up yourself. You have to build the 3D printer yourself, right? The Imagine this 3D printer are like IKEA furnitures. You buy your IKEA furnitures. It comes with different parts, right? It comes with an instruction manual. You just have to follow the instruction manual. Step one, step two, step three. If you can build an IKEA furniture, you can build a 3D printer, all right? That's the uh, baseline. So if you feel that, um, can I build it? Will I be able to handle it? Because I'm not a mechanical engineer. My answer is yes. If you can build a chair from IKEA, you can build a 3D printer, all right? You just need to be more confident in building it, okay? And then uh, every 3D printer, if you need to DIY it, you, there will be instruction manual to teach you. And not to mention the community of 3D printing is very, very strong. Right, there are a lot of people out there that is able to give guidance and provide advice and help uh, how to build a 3D printer. Okay, um, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave my 3D printer running. At the same time, I am going to... Hold on. Okay, so you have two screens to see the 3D printer while I do the presentation. All right, you have two views on the left side. Okay, this printing will take around 12 minutes, so let's proceed. Um, Oh yeah, by the way, I hope I answer your question, Mr. Chu. Um, but later on, I will also share what you need to, to start your 3D printing journey, all right? And what printer you should get. Um, but before that, okay, how 3D printer is changing the world, all right? This is the main topic for this webinar. And um, I have separated in, into two different categories, the industry impact and also the education impact. So for industry, um, I split into three categories again. The first one is the automation industry. By today, Ford is actively using um, 3D printers to build their car parts right, for testing. In order to, right, for R&D, it takes a lot of resources to fabricate parts. Okay, not just for the automation industry, for the production, for aviation, for any industries. It takes a lot of money to build a small little part, right? If you're not using a 3D printer, okay, you need to fabricate, you need to go through a lot of process to build a part. And once you build the part, you design the part and you build the part and you test it out and it doesn't fit or it doesn't work, you wasted a lot of money just by going through all that process. That's why Ford invested a lot in 3D printing so that they, it allows them to do the word rapid prototyping. Okay, they are allowed, the R&D are allowed to design this part, print it out, test it. If it fails, it's okay because it doesn't cost as much as the real fabrication process. So it saved the company a lot. All right. As mentioned over here, it saved them 493000 per month just by doing R&D and testing the car parts, okay? But of course, the parts that they print are not uh, the ones that we use at home. They use different types of um, material, a stronger material for their printing, okay? Number two, healthcare industry. 
um, this we are all we all can relate uh, to the latest um, I mean the recent events of COVID-19 so during the period of COVID-19 the whole world the community the 3d printing community in the whole world came together and started printing PPEs right protective personal equipment right this is due to the supply chain is not able to to provide enough um, PPE right? because the demand is very high. So the 3D printing community stepped in and decided to, hey, why not we design um, face masks, we designed um, ways to help the frontliners. So in this picture over here is actually um, face masks designed by the Kaki DIY. So they printed a lot of these face masks and distribute to the frontliners in Malaysia. and not just Kaki DIY, but there are a lot of uh, the DIY hobbies, uh, the 3D printing community. They came out, use their 3D printer at home, print all this for the frontliners during the COVID-19. All right. Imagine this doesn't happen at all. Imagine the patent is still there today. All right. Hobbies won't own, they won't have a 3D printer at home only the industry have 3D printer at home, what would happen? Right? You won't, right? the, the hobbyists won't be able to supply this PPE and indirectly it affects the frontliners health. It may it give them higher potential of getting COVID-19. So it kind of saves life from 3D printing aspect, right? From 3D printing, you give face shield and then in the end, you right, save lives. So um, that's how the 3D printer impacts the world today. And then there's this uh, artificial organ, like I mentioned in 1999. So 3D printer, it's widely used by the medical industry. They use it for artificial organ. They print artificial, artificial organs for transplant for patients. Of course, it's not cheap, but um, it's happening right now as we speak okay and again prosthetics become very affordable all right imagine people who who are able to print their own prosthetic arm at home or design their own arm and can customize different arms all right so uh, the price of a 3d printer allows people to do that these days and the last category is the aviation industry so do you know that Airbus or the Boeing, uh, they use 3D printed parts in the plane, right? They actually print 3D printed parts to make the plane lighter. And then if the plane is lighter, it is able to fly, take off more efficiently. So with that, um, the aviation invests a lot in 3D printing as well. And then next, how 3D printing is change, impacting the education industries, um, the educational perspective, uh, the CAD design, right? Uh, like what I said, uh, SketchUp. So if students are able to get exposed to 3D modeling tools, they have the exposure early when they enter a, a profession or they, when they decided to go into a a STEM profession or an architect profession, they are familiar with all these tools. They are able to pick it up faster and they are able to innovate even more, right? So starting earlier, is uh, it brings benefits to the community in the future. And the second point is learning materials. So as a teacher, uh, if you want to explain how a brain works or how a heart works, you can actually print out the anatomy or the object of this um the model of this object and then you can show your student so they're able to learn physically they will be able to understand it more effectively right you are able to print different different teaching materials and lastly supports the blind you can print braille objects so that um, the blind students are able to learn not just blind students but anyone who are blind they are able to all right visualize through uh, braille objects. Huh? So all this can be done from a 3D printer. Okay, on your left, you can see that the 3D printer is done printing. 
the object is over there. Um, I will leave the 3D printer to cool down for a moment, right? While continue through our last few slides. But let me answer Alex's question first. Is 3D printing metal machine require a special license in Malaysia? Metal machines means the large industrial metal uh, 3D printers. Okay, so um, to be honest, I'm not sure what's the regulation of the industrial uh, 3D printers in, in the manufacturing, in the production line. Uh. But for hobbies, of course, you don't need a license. Um, let me think. Metal machines require special license. Hmm. Okay. Um, sorry, Alex, I won't be able to answer you this right now. Maybe uh, I will check it out with my colleague and we'll be able to give you an answer for this all right, metal machines. All right. But uh, for certain cases, large scales 3D printers for hobbies style, you don't actually need license plastic materials. But if it passes through a safety regulation for 3D printer, example, the heat or the uh, certain criteria, then you will need a license. Uh. All right. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to continue on. If you are uh, someone new who are interested in owning a 3D printer, but you're not sure where to start, let me expand this. Okay, these are the three questions that you should ask yourself. Number one, should I buy a 3D printer at all? Right? Do I do I really need a 3D printer? This is the question that most people who own a 3D printer have to go through. Okay, if you are not sure, I suggest you visit a makerspace near you. How do you know if there's a makerspace near you? Just Google makerspace near me, and it will point out to you. This is the makerspace near you. If you are in uh, KL, you can go to Kapi Dewai to visit them and see what a 3D printer looks like. You can talk to an experienced 3D printer owner so that they can share their expertise, they can share their experience with you. But bear in mind that owning a 3D printer doesn't mean that you have to be an engineer. It can be a hobby. Okay, so um, this is what I suggest. And also you can join a 3D printing community. Just go to Facebook, search 3D printing community, ask them questions. The people there are very friendly everywhere. All right. Question number two, which 3D printer should I buy? So you have to identify what type of 3D printer you want. The most common 3D printer is the FDM 3D printer, uh, which I just printed just now. And then there's SLS and SLA, and then there's DLP. Right? There are so many types of 3D printers, but the most common one and the cheapest one will be the FDM. And then after you decided, oh, I want this 3D printer, you of course you have to compare it um, the features versus the budget right you have to compare um, do you want a very good feature 3d printer or something that is simple enough for you to start okay and then find a brand with good support okay don't get a brand that you never heard of or your friends never heard of and no one never heard of so get a brand that you're confident in and number three where should i buy my 3d printer so um, my opinion, you have to go to the established regional store online right, or a local store. It's best to get a 3D printer from somewhere locally and not overseas. Why? If it, because a 3D printer contains a lot of parts. Right? You don't want to ship a whole box of 3D printer from China to your house and then you realize that there's one missing part. You have to get you have to ask them to ship another part to you, right? The distance is far. The support takes time. So having a local support gives you an advantage in that, right? And also with local support, you can ask questions um, and you can get response faster, right? The communication is there, okay? But of course, uh, I also put in there China online stores. You are allowed to get it from China online stores, but bear in mind that the support is lesser, the technical support is lesser, and then the warranty, you have issues with warranty. So best is to get um, it locally, okay? All right, next. So here are a few uh, recommendations, personal recommendations for people who are interested in starting 
Okay, let me go through this and then I'll answer my question. So there are two types of 3D printer that I recommend. The Creality Ender 3, the price range is around 950. The highlight is that if you get this 3D printer, you will learn a lot. The learning curve is very steep. You will learn a lot, which is a good thing. You gain a lot of knowledge about 3D printer and it requires more fiddling means you have to do uh, tweaking, okay? Uh, you have to calibrate it. You have to make sure that every part is configured. So, but um, it's not a trade-off, but it's a learning curve, right? And then the number two is the Ender 3 Pro, which is what I'm using right now. It comes with the MK8 extruder, the metal extruder. Um, so why metal is because it takes a lot of stress when you press. So you need it to be metal. You don't want it to be plastic. Where if you press long enough, if it's plastic, then it will break. And then there's a magnetic bit. Magnetic bit, um, I'll show you later. It allows me to take off my parts easily. I can just take out and then um, there's no, I don't need to be worried about my materials stuck on the bed. And the third one is the PLA filament, uh, a plastic filament that is easy to print. So from my experience, I realized that different types of filament represents different difficulty of 3D printing. Example, like what Alex mentioned, metal machine. If you want to print metal from a 3D printer, yes, doable but the experience needed and the calibration needed and the difficulty is totally different with what we are printing at home using PRA filament all right if you want to use flexible filament sure go ahead but you will need to do a lot of configuration you need to make sure that the setting is correct so personally I would suggest for a starter PRA filament because it's also non-toxic right, and it's recyclable Okay, back to uh, Ayin, one more Ayin's question. Where can I get it in Malaysia? Um, so over here, over here, under here, right, you can see there are links for Cytron.io. Um, actually, I'm from Cytron Technologies, and we also sell uh, 3D printers. And I believe today there is uh, like a special rate for 3D printers and filament as well. All right, do, do go check it out. You can get the 3D printers there. You can get different parts and accessories as well. But uh, that's not our main focus here today. But feel free to go and check it out. And we have our YouTube channel as well. We, we have reviews from different partners on 3D printers, Creality Ender 3 and Creality Ender 3 Pro. All right. You can also contact us or talk to us from our web page. Right? Ask us questions. We will be able to support you uh, if you have any technical questions. And then uh, again, this is a, a personal list of items. So back then, I helped a lot of students set up, or help a lot of schools set up in their lab with three D printers. And when we go in, we don't just bring a three D printer in; we bring all these tools in so that they learn how to use set square, they learn how to use digital printers, they learn how to use tweezers and different different tools to take care of the three D printer. Right. Um, so I believe all this, you will be able to get it from like Mr. DIY or uh, your local grocery shops. Uh. But these two, 9 and 10, I would like to highlight is that you, you need a box to store your filament, store your plastic, so that you need to protect your plastic from uh, getting moisture. Right? You don't want it to absorb moisture. Right? So again, a lot of things to learn. But as you go along, you realize that, oh, you learn a lot of things by just getting a 3d printer okay it's not a toy but it's a it's a progressive learning you keep learning every single day okay all right uh just here here are just some pictures that i would like to share uh this pen drive over here is my first print of from a 3d printer uh, after my competition i printed this and then i like variables so i decided to print my own casing for a pen drive and then of course i uh, during my time in schools i help students to set up and teach students how to set up their 3d printers so the the point of this page is that uh the message is students will are able to learn because they are passionate they're interested in mechanical um, machines when they see machines they get inspired they get excited all right and that's the whole idea of a 3D printer. If you bring a laptop with uh, programming 
a bunch of code, the students see it, they, they will get demotivated very quickly. But with a 3D printer, you can slowly guide them into, into um, 3D modeling or even programming G code. So it kind of attracts students naturally. And I don't know what's the psychological uh, aspect on this, but it works. If you bring a 3D printer to school, every student gets excited naturally. All right. And then before I end this session, let's go back to our 3D printed model over here. Okay. So this is the, the model that I drew just now, and this is the magnetic page. So I just pop it up, take it up. All right. I'll just put some string out. The strength of the parts depends on what type of material you use, but PLA is actually quite strong. Right, I can use this to open up my. Right, I can open up different different screws. So, yeah, and here are some of the parts uh, that you can actually print with a 3D printer. So, do leave me any questions. Uh, any questions relating to this 3D printer or how uh, any any technical questions about a 3D printer or how this 3D printer? Alright. Okay. Um I believe that's the end of the demonstration for a 3D printer part. And let's proceed to actually Actually, that's the end of my session. If you have any question, feel free to ask uh, or drop your question in the comment section. And I will try my the best of my abilities to answer you as a hobbyist. Um, I'll give you my true, honest opinion. Right? For a 3D printer, when I get a 3D printer, I wasn't sure what I want to do with, with the 3D printer. It always sits there staring back at me. Right. But then I realized that, okay, I do a lot of projects. I do a lot of uh, tinkering. And when I need a casing, when I need a box, I can just hit a button and print it out easily. Okay. I don't have to worry about um, the material. I mean, you can buy the material and then you can print it. But the customization is that it allows you to explore your creativity when you have a 3D printer. Right, you finally feel that you are able to make stuff without the shop telling you what you have to buy. Okay, like you go to a shop and then they say the Tupperware is this size, but right now you decide the Tupperware size. You want this Tupperware to be this size, you print your Tupperware this size. You don't have to buy, you don't have to be a consumer anymore, you become a maker naturally. Okay. So um, if you have no question, I would like to just share a simple video. Um, I made that video like last night and the video is about, okay, I have a camera stuck on the, it's a very simple video. Okay, with that, I would like to end my session. I thank you very much for attending. And okay, yeah, uh, I.
I believe this is a very fruitful and also informative session shared by Mr. Adrian. Uh, actually, personally, myself, I have a doubt. Okay, so therefore, uh, I want to know that for the 3D printing, right? So if because you have already introduced about all the advantage and also know that, that for example, like the customization, also the flexibilities and all that. So therefore, uh, since it brings a lot of pros to our daily life right now. So is there any cons? Okay, for example, is there any shortcoming that the 3D printer is the limitation of all that? So maybe at some area, we need to go back to the conventional building parts and all that. So is there any really like the problems right now with the 3D printing? Um, for our 3D printing, okay. The reason why the 3D printer, the FDM technology is so well built is also thanks to the 20 years of patent from Stratasys. They do a lot of R&D during that time. And when it comes out, the community starts to take up this technology and they start to build, uh, build it around this technology. And 2009 until today, a lot of resources is available online thanks to this community. Right? There are a lot of forums for 3D printing, a lot of people with a lot of experience. Right? So the information around is abundant, a lot of information. and. Mm. There are a lot of, we can't say it's cons, but a lot of problems you will face from 3D printing. Uh, just to be honest, you don't buy a 3D printer, hit a button and it prints an object immediately or perfectly. You won't get a perfect print for your first few prints because that's reality. You have to learn to configure and understand what the problem is. And then eventually you understand that, oh, so by tweaking this tiny little thing, you can change the whole results. And then, but bear in mind that you are not doing this alone. There's a lot of people out there, a community out there that faces the same issue and they have already learned from this experience. So you can actually look up to them and say, hey, how to solve this problem? Or can you give me some advice, right? Mm -hmm. The problem, I can't tell you. The cons, I can't tell you. Uh, what's mm -hmm. the cons? But I can tell you there are like a lot, a lot, a lot of problems you can yeah. face. And that's the fun part in 3D printing, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's a learning curve for students, so they, mm -mm. they learn something and then they just, it's a character building as well. Like you, you learn and then you keep on learning and learning and learning, right? Okay. okay. I think we have one more question from the audience. I think it should show on screen. All right. So in your opinion, what are the current limitations of Ender 3 which you would like to improve? All right. Um, for Ender 3, uh, if you're talking about the Ender tree that I'm using right now, so in order to have this this bed, right? Uh, I did, I did mention that if your bed is like like that, right? You can't print the object, right? You have to make sure it's level. So you will need different different upgrades to make sure that your bed is level all the time. Okay? I do a lot of moving for my three D printer. Whenever I go out and teach students, I have to bring my three D printer from location one to location two. And then when I move around the bit, sang a bit, so I have to uh, always calibrate the bit, leveling the bit. So I believe that there's a lot of different ways to modify these 3D printers to make it better. Um, but then again, these are up to the hobbies, okay? There are also, again, a lot of problems, but a lot of upgrades that you can implement into a 3d printer that's the fun part in it uh, right mm. when i get a 3d printer the first thing i do is i google search how right, things i can upgrade for my ender 3 all right ender 3 pro and then there are like a long list of things i can print to upgrade the printer mm. right so it's okay. endless the possibilities are endless okay so um thank you so much for answering the questions and I believe this is pretty much enough to conclude our session for today. And also uh, on behalf of School of Engineering uh, in Asia Pacific University, we'd like to once again thank uh, Mr. Adrian Tio from Citron Technology to bringing up this wonderful and also very informative session to all of us. Okay, thank you so much, Adrian. And we thank shall you. end the session right now. Thank you thank and you. see you again. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bye.